Hey, I know you. United States, 20th century, right? Put her there, Yankee. Well, okay, I'll tell you my story if you'll tell me yours. Want to sit down? Let me see. It's been a while. When I was born, my mouth dropped open. I found life pretty amazing, you know what I mean? declare the glory of God and the firmament shows his handiwork. But I knew it. someday there would be new heavens and a new earth and that they'd be even better I just couldn't wait to see them and be with the one who made all the arrangements by the time I could read I knew all the facts that was called faith then remember but I was an ordinary guy I was brought up in a plain ordinary Christian home you jerk! What do you think you're doing? And I grew up to be a plain, ordinary Christian. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him and went to him. By the time I'd grown up, I'd pretty much forgotten where my life had come from. And I closed my mouth, and my nose and my ears got stuffed up. And I began to see things through the eyes of a stuffed up adult. And the scenery changed. And my life became nothing more than a concern for a career and a girl. He'd probably like it if you called him sir. And if you run out of things to say, just ask him about his business. Then he'll do all the talking. Right. Take a left here. I can't get over the way this place has changed since I was a kid. That subdivision used to be a cornfield every other year. How old were you when you moved? About eight, I guess. And you still remember this place? I remember. What else about your father? Well, as soon as he knows you're interested in me, he'll want to know about your business. And that's where you have it over all the rest. None of the rest have ever hit it off with your father, huh? Not very well. I probably wouldn't have approved of them either. getting into a very cozy little neighborhood here. Take a ride after the pillars. 
Is this a street or your driveway? Very funny. I can't wait to see this place. Should I tighten up my tie? My father won't be home yet. Well, I'll just tighten it up out of respect for the neighborhood. Wait! Stop! No, go past this driveway. Oh, turn into the next driveway. I need to go by our neighbors here for the key. Wait here! to release the tension. Frida, what are you doing? Dada Frida! Hey, welcome home. How'd you do on your finals? What have you done to the yard? I populated it. After school activities. This is my fifth grade class. You never met them, have you? I'm showing them the ropes. This is Ernest and Linda. What a dance all this. Oh, you can't see this from downtown. Up the way! Ronnie's next. It's my turn. Ronnie needs to practice. He keeps turning upside down. We've got to get these kids in shape for their climb to Devil's Lake next weekend. Frida, you've got to move this stuff out right now. Relax. The parents are coming at 5.30 to pick the kids up. Dad won't be home till 7. Oh, that's right. This is the night you're coming home. Dad will be home early. And we're having company for dinner. Guy, where is he? I can't wait to meet him. if you want to go anywhere. Oh, Frida, you've ruined everything. What's the matter? Does your boyfriend have something against trampolines and kids? No, but I do. Come on. And he's not just my boyfriend. It's my fiance. Donna! When did all this happen? Your letters didn't say anything about that. We just firmed it up last weekend. You firmed it up. Did you shake on it and everything? Can you kids on the trampoline get off and help move that thing to the side of the house, please? Is she in the fifth grade? I don't know where she came from. He can't be up there. What do you want me to do, cut him down? Oh, great. Now I'm sweating. Hey! Where do you think you're going? I'm with Donna. She came for the key. Who's Donna? Do you want him to know how dull this place usually is? What's he like anyway? Where'd you meet him? In a Bible study. Oh, he was leading it. Great, a Sunday school teacher. That'll really liven the place up. Oh, Freddie, you'll love him. Sure, we'll ask him to bring a six-pack to a party and he'll show up with a package of Kellogg's assortment. Up. Donna, haven't you learned about those types of guys from the guys at church here? Why couldn't you find someone who'd add a little life to this family? <sighs> you must be Donna's sister. You must be Donna's fiance. My lifelessness must have given me away. Is all this moving around on my account? It's very funny what happened here. Was... Who are all these kids? They're from Donna's first marriage. They're Frida's fifth grade class. I still haven't figured out why she brought him to our house for a field trip. Glad to meet you, Frida. Hi, guy. You do this often? Only on Friday afternoons. You must be a very popular teacher. Only on Friday afternoons. I'm really strict in class, so it kind of helps morale. Maybe I should try that with my salesman. I wouldn't mind spending my Friday afternoons playing racquetball. Guy's just been promoted as regional sales director of Williams and Garner. He's in charge of the whole Midwest. I've never heard of Williams and Garner. But I do think the whole Midwest is in a mess, and it's about time somebody took charge. Let's go get my luggage. 
And I hope for your sake you get this place cleaned up before Dad gets home. She looks like she could use a hand back there. She's got the whole fifth grade class with her. I'm sorry about Frida. Oh, I'm glad about Frida. Hey, when are you getting married? I was thinking we might elope. Oh, that would be so much fun. You'd have to stay here. We just set a tentative date for July 15th. Wow, that soon? Are you going to tell Dad tonight? Amen. Oh, I'm sorry I had to miss the graduation ceremonies. Oh, don't be. I keep hearing that processional over and over in my ears. I don't know why I bothered marching again this year. Guy, right, did you just get your master's degree, too? No, I finished three years ago. You remember, Dad. I wrote you about that. Oh, yes. Well, where do you plan to live now? I'm just coming back to this area. I grew up here, and I like it. He just bought a condominium in Glenview. Hmm, that should be a very sound investment. Pass the salt, please. Oh, Donna, Jim Hayes called last week. He wanted to know what day you were coming home. He'll be calling back. Jim's an old friend. Speaking of wise investments, I understand Jim's finally making his move into the Chicago Board of Options. That kid's shown more initiative, more natural ability and drive. Cleverly disguised as Jim Hayes, mild-mannered accountant with a large metropolitan brokerage firm, he fights a never-ending battle for truth, justice, and the American dollar. He's not an accountant anymore. Saved the money himself for that seat on the board of options. Scraped and made a few thrifty investments and lived like a Spartan. Didn't fritter his money away on women. Took a leap of faith into the options. And today, for a man in his mid-twenties, he's a very well-established businessman. Frida! Guy's regional sales manager for Williams and Garner. He's in, in charge, charge of the whole Midwest. Yes. Hmm. Really? Williams and Garner? How long do you say you've been out of school? Three years. Well, that's quite amazing. Actually, the promotion just came through. It seems as though a lot of things are just coming through for me. You see, Mr. Gray, Donna and I have become very close in the last few months. Well, I'm glad you two are getting along so well. Uh, would you mind passing the gravy, please? Oh, look, Dad, here's an article in the Reader's Digest on how to flatten your stomach. Please don't read at the table, Frida. Guy met our neighbor today. Really? What'd she look like, anyway? I've only seen the gardener. Well, she's shorter than the gardener. Dad, there's something we're trying to tell you. Mr. Gray, the fact is, I'd like you to be among the first to know that I love Donna very much. And I think I'm finally in a position to make her happy. Mm-hmm. We can talk about it later. Well, Frida, what's happening these days in the fifth grade? Well, we finished our history textbook today. It only went as far as Mahatma Gandhi. I'll have to make up our history for another week. Somehow I can't picture you teaching history. P.E. maybe. History was my major. Did you know that Mahatma Gandhi once said, I would seriously consider becoming a Christian if it weren't for Christians? Really? I guess being so close to your kids and teaching history must give you a lot of opportunities to tell them about Christ. Frida doesn't quite believe the same as we do. We try not to talk about it.
Why do you think Frida's never accepted Christ? I really don't know. Oh, it's late. The Bible study's already started. And I want to get a chance to show you off tonight. Hi, Donna. Hi, Uncle Steve. This is Guy. Hello, Guy. Glad to meet you, Mr. Gray. Oh, just call me Steve. They're meeting in the living room tonight. From the sun. An important message to people who occasionally use the sleeping aids. These are my cousins, You've got Kenny and Don. Without worrying about whether well, say hello to Guy, you two. Hi. New Sorry, we're late. That's all right. Come right on in. So when you need help to relax, to fall asleep, try sleep ease. With sleep ease. And to the angel of the church in Laodicea write, the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God, says this, I know your deeds, that you are neither cold nor hot. I would that you were cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. Because you say, I am rich and have become wealthy and have need of nothing, and you do not know that you are wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. He's in charge of the whole Midwest. Are you going to the children's home with our group tomorrow afternoon? Well, I thought Don and I might break out my boat and do some skiing tomorrow. Oh, let's don't do anything where we have to exert ourselves tomorrow. Let's just go for a little picnic or something. Donna! Dad wants to see you. All right. Hey, listen. Frida, do you know of any good places for a picnic? Sure, in the forest preserve all along my jogging trail. Dad's in the study. Good morning, Dad. Good morning, Donna. Oh, Mrs. Greer will get it. Donna, I'd like for you to tell me exactly how you feel about Guy. I could never be happy without him. That's all I needed to know. Oh, Dad. I did make some calls. I have some acquaintances at Williams and Garner. There's no disputing the fact that he's a young man with a lot of potential. Guy's here. Good morning. I'm not sure, Guy, but I think you just got the Gray family stamp of approval. Welcome to the club. I wonder if the ladies would excuse us a moment while Guy and I talk over a little business. Oh, welcome to the business. There was nothing to worry about? Have a seat, Guy. You were very frank with me last night in expressing your feelings for Donna. I appreciate that. And I'm going to be equally frank with you. There may be an opening in our international division very soon. We've been exporting to a number of South American countries. Our vice president in charge of international marketing is retiring. Donna says Guy was the president of the Spanish club in college. A knowledge of Spanish would be helpful. Well, I'm certainly not fluent. No matter. I'm counting on your expertise in wholesaling. The company's always on the lookout for young men with a track record like yours. I don't know how you and Donna would feel about a couple of years out of the country, but the job is a necessary stepping stone. This was just the kind of a break I'd been waiting for. And yet, it was about this time that I began to wonder if something was missing. Are you happy? Am I happy? I asked you first. Of course I'm... I know I'm happy. Aren't you happy? I'm happy if you're happy. Then you must be ecstatic. I've never been so happy. It seems as though 
I'm getting everything I need to live happily ever after. The perfect job, the perfect girl. Well, the perfect job and the perfect girl. So why that melancholy look? I'm not melancholy. I was just remembering when I used to come here as a kid. Did you ever come here when you were little? We weren't living here then. It was different. The clouds were different. One run, one hit, no errors, nobody left. A home run by Melvin. Guy and Dad sure seem to have a lot in common. What an amazing coincidence. They both like baseball. Hello, Gray Residence. Just a moment, please. It's for you, Mr. Gray. William Gray speaking. Oh, hello, George. Fine. All right, yourself? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, it sounds like you have a terrific program going for those boys. I tell you, though, as much as I'd like to help you out, my business this season is demanding an awful lot of my time. And choir rehearsal takes up my Wednesday nights. I, I just have to set some time priorities. My family has to come first. I thought you'd understand. Okay. Bye, George. Is that George Richter? Yes. What's after this time? Oh, leaders for that boys program. Can you imagine him asking me with my schedule? Hey, how'd he get on second? As I drove home that afternoon, curiosity brought me back to the spot where we'd picnicked. The longer I looked around, the more I remembered the way that area used to look and smell and sound, back when all my senses had been tuned in to the one who had made it all possible. And I wondered if somehow I'd gotten on a whole different frequency. doing here? Getting in shape for next year's Boston Marathon. What's your excuse? I'm jogging too. Jogging my memory. Sounds heavy. Looks like we're both going to be jogging in the rain pretty soon. Lucky for you my car's handy. I'll give you a lift back home. That's all right. I like jogging in the rain. What kind of memories are you jogging? I was just remembering when I was a kid. How I'd watch a storm come up with thunder and lightning, and then the rainbow at the end. It was like God was trying to tell me just who he is and what he can do. You uh, don't mind my talking about God, do you? Not if you're talking about something that's real, not just something you read about in a Sunday school lesson. There was something about the faith I had when I was a kid that was very real. I mean, it's real now, too. But then, it was like he was right there with me all day long. You were brought up in a Christian home, weren't you? I mean, when your mother was alive, was she a Christian? Sure. They made me go to church all the way through high school. <laughs> so here's the $64,000 question. Why haven't you accepted Christ? because I don't want to become a Christian. Do you believe in Christ? 
I was a history major, remember? Of course I believed there was a Jesus in Nazareth in the first century. I mean, that's why there was a first century. He gathered quite a following, somehow managed a lot of miracles, fulfilled all the prophecies for the Jewish Messiah, and a lot of things are hard to explain. Like what? The prophecies and psalms that describe his death on the cross hundreds of years before the Romans even invented crucifixion. All the first-hand witnesses to his resurrection who died for him. The sudden growth of believers among the Jews at Jerusalem, right where the empty tomb was. You must believe more than I do. You've never tried not to believe. You recommend it? I guess it's given me belief. But being a Christian, it's not for me. Sounds like you're very close. I've been very close all my life. So why don't you become a Christian? I just don't want to be the only one. The only Christian? The only real one. Well, I'll overlook your egotism if you will. A Christian is supposed to follow the example of Christ, right? Be absolutely submissive to the Father's will, help other people and love them as much as you love yourself. I've never met anybody like that. So why don't you become a Christian and show us all how to do it right? I'm independent, but I'm not that independent. That'd be pretty spooky, trying to do it all alone. I need to know it can be done first. Well, what am I supposed to be doing wrong? I didn't say you were doing anything wrong. If you're like most Christians I know, you probably aren't doing anything. Come on. One of these days, you and I will have to sit down and have a long talk. I told you I like jogging in the rain. Three miles from home, get it. <laughs> So I finally knew why Frida hadn't accepted Christ. It was because of people like me. I thought to myself, she's got some nerve telling me I'm not doing anything. What does she want me to do? I'm utterly devoid of talent. About the only thing I can do is work. I'm a salesman. That's all I know how to do. I can't preach. I get nauseous in front of a lot of people. I can't lead songs or even carry a tune. I have no musical ability. I was still thinking up arguments when I went to sleep that night. I dreamt I was back in my car with Frida, giving her all my arguments. And all of a sudden, I realized I was driving in the wrong lane. And then I wondered, what purpose would my life have served if it had ended that day? And where would Frida be? The next morning, while I went to church a slightly different person, the rest of the world went to church the same old way.
Come on, come on, come on. Turn off the TV. We'll be back by 12.30. If Dr. Brenner doesn't go over again. Someone ought to set his watch. I'm starting the car. Come on. I got a baseball game at 12.45. Oh, for crying out loud. Run back and get your Bible. Could he have the keys to the house? Watch out for the cop, Dad. Where? For the Jews, a word had power, it had efficacy. While Donna's pastor was what speaking that morning, I was having a little talk with this, myself. That the word of God and I concluded living, that I'd been just letting powerful. life happen to me. It penetrates. The word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Not a high priest. I'd convinced myself that I'd put my life in God's hands. But, but I just put it up for grabs. We are. Well, my sermon ended just about the same time as Dr. Brenner's. And then, wouldn't you know it, he asked if there were anyone who felt the need to recommit his life to Christ. He wanted him to walk up to the front. Well, I felt the need all right, but I didn't feel like parading up the aisle right in front of everybody. And yet, people, people like Frida, needed to know that I was sorry about my half-hearted Christianity and that I intended to change. I'm going up. You what? I'm going up there. You're kidding, aren't you? Nope. Guy, wait. Can't you talk to Dr. Brennan afterwards? I mean, I want to see you. That's the idea. Donna, we finally got a chance to start our life out right together. Let's go together. Why are you going to see us? our Bible study for you. Maybe now they'll listen to me. Now let's go. Let me see. Oh, my God. Terrible. Just a... Let us pray. I, I'm coming! Uh. When I accepted Christ as a child, it was so easy. I had no fiancé to embarrass. No career to take up my time. This is different. It is different. The fight for your salvation was fought 2,000 years ago and it was finished. For you to choose the winning side was very easy. But living for Christ in this life requires a day-by-day -day struggle. Paul calls it a fight. The same source of power is still there for you to put into action. But you have to give up your will for God's will, not only once, but over and over, every minute. Are people going to see a difference in my life then, if I give up my will for his will all the time? Or should I even be concerned about what other people think of me? Yes, you should be concerned. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. That reminds us of his other words. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. If glorifying God is our purpose in life, we ought to be bearing fruit bearing fruit. I've always wanted to do great things for God. Evangelize nations like Billy Graham. Sing Christian songs over the radio. There's one problem. 
I'm not very talented. I'm a very ordinary guy. All I really know about you so far, guy, is that you have a job and that you're getting married. I assume then that you already know how to work. Oh, yes. And how to love? Yes. The rest of my life went by very fast. What about Friday when the other guy shoves me first? What if the other guy shoves you first? Yeah. Well, let's look in the book that Luke wrote. Good afternoon. I'm Don Brenner, pastor of the church down in the corner. This is Guy Newman, a member of the congregation. We just stopped by to invite you to visit some of our services this Sunday if you can. Guy, you can try the next one if you like. Where's Guy tonight? He's here. <laughs> hey, Donna! Put her in April. We'll be out of here in 15 minutes. You want me to put an apron over this dress? Why not? It's our new spring line. Looks like it'll fit. I'm going home with Dad. Hey, Donna! I'll pick... I'll pick you up for church tomorrow! Where's Guy? There you go, kid. What do you think of that stay dry lining, huh? Bet you didn't think I could do it, did you? Well, just don't do that again. <laughs> hey, babe, what's your problem? Come on, baby. Let's do the twist. Donna. Hey. I'm sorry to help after all. The film is over. Guy, how do you get yourself buttonholed into these things? Mrs. Henning said she really needed to hear the sermon today. She's been in here eight weeks in a row because no one else would volunteer. I'll volunteer when I'm a mother. I thought we might get in a little practice. I wanted to hear the sermon. I wanted to practice it. Donna, I'm just trying to get involved in your church. You don't have to do all this to become a member. Now you woke up stinky. You've got to stop being so spineless and learn how to say no to people. Let's go. No. We can't leave until the parents pick up all the kids. I'll be in the car. Have you been watching the kids? Yeah, I gave Mrs. Henning the morning off. My name's George, I'm the youth director. I'm Guy. You must be Donna Gray's fiance. That's me. Listen, I understand you've been teaching the young singles group. I taught it once. I'm not much of a teacher, just sort of a discussion leader. Oh, that's interesting. You know, our high school sophomores are in need of a Sunday school teacher or a discussion leader. I wonder if we might discuss that sometime soon. Carol Gibbons. Here. Marcy Weber. Mike Farley. He hasn't come since last year. Hmm. Larry Oldenburg. Where's Larry? Probably in bed. Listen. Uh, next Sunday, I want us to try something a little different. Good morning, Mrs. Oldenburg. I'm Guy Newman, Larry's Sunday school teacher, and this is my class. We just came by to pick up Larry for Sunday school. 
Well, that's very thoughtful of you. I'm afraid Larry's still in bed. Well, can we get him? You could try. Upstairs, first door on the left. Yeah? Morning, Larry. Are you decent? Yeah, who's there? Hi, Larry. Long time no see. I'm Guy, your new Sunday school teacher. Me and the boys just thought we'd come fetch you. Unless you're doing something more important. Come on, Larry, it's a nice day out there. You can sleep in Sunday school. What you wearing today, Larry? You're good too? Yeah, your nosy Sunday school teacher. I just called to find out how that job interview went this morning. I've been praying about it. Yeah? Great! Your first job. That's an important one. Oh, is that all? That's three times as much as I made on my first job. Then one day, I was driving home from a customer. It was a route I must have driven a hundred times. But this was the first time I really noticed. There were some miserable looking neighborhoods down there. I decided to turn off the expressway and have a look around. Some of the people didn't look too cheery either. So after I had a little talk with God about it, I had another talk with Dr. Brenner and asked if he knew of anything I could do. He said that since I seemed to handle our North Shore teenagers so well on Sundays, maybe I was ready to try something a little more challenging on Saturdays. And he put me in touch with the Volunteer Resource Program for the Juvenile Courts. Do you speak any of the following languages? Greek, Italian, Polish, Spanish? I know a little Spanish. That could be helpful. What would you do if a kid or his parents verbally abused you? Well, if they verbally abused me in Spanish, I probably couldn't understand anyway. They never taught us any square words. What would you do if a kid pulled a knife on you? Pray. And I pray best when I'm running. I think I know just the kid for you. I'll put you in touch with his pastor, too. Angel! Hey, Reverend Kramer! Who's the new Lord Gordon? Jesus, how are you? This is Guy. Guy, this is Jesus. What are we going to do? Play ball, go fishing, whatever you'd like. Go ahead, Jesus. Have a good time. Just bring him back early, you know. Come on, I worry. And so began my friendship with a 16-year-old kid named Jesus, who'd gotten mixed up with a gang and been arrested twice for carrying a gun. As I got to know Jesus better each Saturday, I found out that he was a Christian, although he said he didn't think about it too much. He was the same kind of Christian I used to be. So every time we went to a baseball game or bowling or whatever, we always spent a little time afterwards looking into God's Word together. And when I planned something fun and some of his gang friends asked to come along, they had to sit in on the Bible study too. A ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Ah, uh, by the way, we know that if you're beginning to think that by God, this time I'd turned no into Mr. Joe spiritual, I ought to point out that I still made my share of mistakes. <laughs> and following Christ didn't really get any easier for me. In fact, I suddenly had problems I'd never had before. But there was always the reassuring knowledge that now at least I was dealing with problems that mattered. 
Usually. You have to spend all your time with kids. Why don't you spend it with some normal ones like Kenny and Don? Not a bad idea. You bet. Fashion change. You are absolutely right. Hey, Kenny, Don, how'd you like to go downtown tomorrow? Don't you dare take them downtown. Don't you read the paper? Did you know that two people got shot down there last week? Did you know that Jesus' old gang would have been in on that shooting if somebody hadn't given them something else to do? So they didn't kill someone Saturday night. Do you think that'll keep them from killing someone Sunday? I mean, what's the point? You don't change people like that. I don't. Good night, Uncle Steve. Good night. Dad says everyone in a gang like that should be locked up. That would solve everything. Arrest all 5,000 gang members in Chicago. That's better than your trying to solve it. What do you think we pay taxes for? <laughs> what time do you have left over for me tomorrow? Well, tomorrow's unusual. You see, the rat smack went so well last Saturday that this week all of Jesus' old gang is coming. The rat smack? Yeah, we had a rat smack last Saturday night. They closed the gym because of rats. Actually, that was just an excuse. But now they have no excuse, and we can use the gym tomorrow. What's a rat smack? That's when you get a bunch of guys in a big room full of rats, and you give them all rat smackers. Clubs, everybody sneaks in, and you turn on all the lights, everybody yells, and the rats go running all over the place, and you smack them. And at the end of it, you see who's the best fighter by who's killed the most rats. Sounds great. Oh, it was. But how do you follow something like that? They wanted to know what I had for them next week. So I told them maybe I'd bring a friend next time. I don't believe the way Frida leaves this trampoline out in the... What friend? Well, you wouldn't have to kill any rats or anything. We already killed them all. That's the problem. Now there's just this big bear gym and nothing to do. I was hoping you might come along and help me think of something. What's the matter? You have a date next Saturday? Well, at least you can help me think of something. They don't even have basketball hoops in there. The guys need something exciting. That you can do in a gym. Are you coming in for a little bit? Yeah. Do you think Frida's still up? Well, you guessed it. Frida was only too happy to help me out the next day. But there was still one very big problem. And I forgot all about it until we were ready to leave for the city. Frida? What would you say if a kid down there started asking you questions? About morality or dying or... Jesus? I'd tell him to stop asking so many nosy questions. <clears throat> you know, Frida, it's so nice of you to offer to give up your whole Saturday afternoon, but now that I see how this equipment breaks down, I think I can set it up again by myself. Sure you can set it up, but can you show him how to use it? Well, I learned a few moves on the high bar back in high school. Yeah? What can you do on the high bar? Uh, chin-ups. Uh... What are you trying to tell me? I'm trying to tell you that I don't want us to go down there like a couple of social workers. What's wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with that. If you want to help these kids to have a slightly better lifetime for the next 50 years, you give them fun stuff to do and you try to keep them from killing each other. But if you want them to have a good life for the next billion years, and after that, you tell them about Jesus Christ. You give them a reason to stop killing each other. You tell them that we all have a problem with our relationship with our Creator. And the Bible calls it sin. And only the Son of God can solve it. I know. You know? I've always known. Oh, yeah. But now I know I want to, I want to do something about it. You're a very extraordinary guy. Is that good? It's good enough for me. As long as I didn't know someone like you, I had an excuse not to accept Christ. 
Now I have no excuse. Listen, we're supposed to be there at three. I'd better make this fast. Are you going to accept Christ right now? Do I need to make an appointment? Of course I am. And she did. At 2.30 on the afternoon of July 10th. You'll have to ask her about her story sometime. And I know I'm unacceptable to you. I want you to accept me. So I accept Jesus Christ. In his name, amen. Okay, let's go. Someday you and I are going to have to sit down and have a long talk. Hey, you kids, bring up the side horse. What's a side horse? He's a droopy looking thing. <laughs> Let's go! Hey, pick it up! Let's go! Watch the man! All right, you guys, everybody take your shoes off. What are we going to do with all this stuff? You guys were so good at fooling around on that playground equipment, I thought we'd start a gymnastics team. A gymnastics team? Who are we going to compete against? We'll start two teams. There will be a half hour intermission at 8.30 during which time anybody who wishes can attend a Bible study on the trampoline. Thank you. Hey, you've done this before. Sure, but on the playground, the street always sits the ground. He's got a very unique style there. Hey, Jimbo, let's see if you can jump over five guys. <laughs> Who's going to try for number six? <laughs> All right, let's go. Well, Peter, what do you think of our gymnastic team so far? Any chance you can come down and do this every night? That must be the girl you're going to marry. Oh, no, that's her sister. Oh. Hey, guy, could you hold this for me for a second? Thanks. You know, guy, I've been thinking. I think the church will be in a position to fund a youth worker. These guys really need somebody like you. Full time? <laughs> wow. I don't know. I never even thought about anything like that. Quite an impression on those kids tonight. They made quite an impression on me. I can't picture any of them stabbing anybody. There were a few there tonight who could. I am so sore. I haven't done that in two months. Oh, I still have to unload the van if I'm going to pick up my kids for Sunday school in the morning. You can do that tomorrow. Donna, I'm glad you waited up. I have to tell you about tonight. It was great. I have good news, too. Dad's been waiting up to tell you. Why don't you wait in the study? I'll go get him. Oh, okay. Good night, Frida. Good 
evening, Guy. How did your Bible study go tonight? Oh, very well, thank you, Mr. Gray. Good, good, good. Oh, Donna, you can come in too, please. This concerns both of you. Let's see how I can put this most discreetly. Do you remember Herb Johnson, our vice president in charge of international marketing? A uh, man slated for retirement later this year? Oh, yes, yes. He's dead. I just got the call tonight. I'm sorry. I'm officially offering you the job now, Guy. We need somebody in there right away. I believe that you're already acquainted with the salary and the possibilities for the future. We've discussed all those things many times. Do you have any questions, though? No, as you say, we have discussed that. Well, then, what do you say? Well, I, I can't tell you how flattered I am, Mr. Gray, but I'll have to have some time to think about it. You have to think about it? <clears throat> Guy, what is there to think about? Well, I've been offered another job. By whom? What firm? Well, it's just a small establishment downtown. Guy, I don't know if you understand what kind of an offer I'm making. It's hard to believe anyone could offer you a better salary. But even if they have, think of the future. Well, that's... you hit it. That's exactly what I'm thinking of, the future. That's why I need some time to think about it. Well... Then there's nothing more to discuss. All I want to do is think about it. How could you insult him like that? It's an insult to think? Donna, you haven't heard about the other offer. That's what I was trying to tell you when I came in. There are some really amazing opportunities opening up with teenagers in the city. Peters offered me a full-time job as youth worker with his church. Are you crazy? Oh, I didn't tell him I'd take it well, yet. Well, that was considerate of you. We'd have to live downtown. If I take your father's job, we'd have to live in Venezuela. There are plenty of men who would do anything for this job. Like Jim Hayes? Yes, like Jim Hayes. Donna, for just a second, let's try to forget what either of us wants to do and try to figure out what God wants us to do. When I said yes to your marriage proposal, I wasn't signing up to give up everything. What were you signing up for when you became a Christian? Don't change the subject. There's something bigger at stake here than God. Than we're at stake here, our relationship. If you don't go upstairs and apologize to my poor father and take that job like any normal, responsible man who's about to take on the responsibility of marriage, then I think we should reconsider our whole relationship. Now you're being silly. I only asked for a little of your patience and a little time to think it over. I've run out of patience and you've run out of time. My nerves can't take talking to you any longer. Good night, Guy. Funny. The more peace I felt with God, the less I felt with Donna. By the end of the summer, God and I were getting along so well that Donna and I decided to stop seeing each other altogether. It turned out that the youth director job fell through anyway because of a lack of funds. But my visits downtown on Saturdays kept reaching more kids, and the Lord was giving me so many opportunities to witness at my regular job, I just couldn't wait to see what he had for me next. I kept thinking that maybe Donna and I would get back together. Come in. Jim's here. Tell him I'll be down in a minute. Three weeks is all it took to forget Guy, huh? People are going to say Jim caught you on the rebound. With Guy, it was on the rebound. Jim's been there all along, waiting patiently, standing faithfully. Did you read in the paper yesterday about that kid that got shot in that neighborhood? And he wanted us to move down there. That boy who got shot is the reason things are so tense down there right now. That's why Guy needs your encouragement. This is no time to pull a jealousy play. You know this is no jealousy play. This is moving on to bigger and better things. Hi.
Those are for Frida? No, these are for Donna. These are for Donna, too. What's that? I say these are for Donna, too. Oh, well, don't feel too bad. It's the thought that counts. I'm beginning to get the impression you never really loved Guy at all. Did you? Why is that so important to you? Weren't you going to tell Jim that I'm coming right down? So how's business in the options these days? Business is going very well. Very well. I bet you and Donna get along just fine, don't you? You know what, Jimbo? I think you deserve Donna more than I do. I'm no competition for you. Give Donna a big kiss goodbye for me, will you? Hey! Guy! Hey, Frida, hello. What brings you out here? Oh, I just came by to see Donna, make sure we're parting peacefully, but... Hey, hold on a minute. These were going to be for Donna, just as a peace offering. But I'd rather give them to you, if you'll take them slightly used. Oh, I was going to call you about tonight. The meeting in the gym will probably have to be scratched. So you can stay home tonight. More trouble? Alfredo's in the hospital with a knife wound in his arm. Oh, no. It's not too serious for him. But now the gang's without its leader. Half the kids are looking for vengeance. I don't know if I can get them together tonight. You're not still going to try, are you? I'll play it by ear. Uh... I've got Jesus in the car. We're going to a Cubs game this afternoon. I guess we're late. Hi, Jesus. Oh, tomorrow in Sunday school, keep a lookout for a guy named Rich Larson. He's a friend of mine from work, so introduce him around, will you? Sure. Sounds like things are going well at work. Yeah, they really are. You know, you sure are looking pretty today. Okay, Jesus. One of these days, you and I will have to sit down and have a long talk. You think we can get anybody together tonight? Uh, about tonight. Uh, I don't think I can make it. Oh. I might as well quit, huh? Can't stop a bullet once he leaves a gun. No, I can't. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame, and am set down with my father in his throne. And Revelation 21.7 says, He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Sorry, man. I gotta get out there. They need me. Steve, you don't really want to hurt anybody. At least leave the gun with me. I won't hurt anybody I don't mean to hurt.
Jesus. Can you even forgive me for this? Please. If it isn't too late, forgive me for... for everything. And like I want to take over my life. Because on my own, I ain't doing nobody no good. Not even me. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall all be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. Waste. What a total waste. Are you kids with the funeral party? Open the casket. Closer. Frida and I finally got the chance to sit down and have that long talk. That's basically the story of my life on the old earth. Now, you tell us your story. What did you do with your first life? 